hey, you, I know nine, over 90% of you aren't subscribed. So what you guys need to do is subscribe because when you do subscribe, I can give you the 10K, I will drink the hot ones hot sauce, I, which I would not like because I do not like hot sauce, but you know what, it's fine. That's what's gonna happen and that's what's gonna happen if you subscribe to me uh, today. So do that, please, because I see that 90% of you are not subscribed. So what are you waiting for? Hey, it's 3TV. We're back for another video. This one is the Insect Heroes. I know I haven't been back in a long time, but I have videos coming up today and tomorrow um, for sure. And then I'll make a, another couple of videos for Friday. You can also recommend me videos to watch, uh, as always. And I will get back to them. And uh, yeah. Also, the new... Uh, the new uh, content should be coming out Saturday too. Uh, it's like content that's supposed to come out on a day, so since I didn't have it done on Saturday or Sunday, I didn't want to put it out until I can get it out on a Saturday or Sunday, so it should be done by this weekend. But let's get into it and play. Play of the game. Forgot to say, it's done by no other, none other than Tirazu. So, you know, just forgot to say that. Insects are one of the most broken factions the game has ever seen. Nowhere else in nature will you find such an incredible concentration of abilities that are not only overpowered, but also extremely unique. It's tough to even know where to start when talking about what makes insects such a successful group, because in a lot of cases, it's not just that their individual abilities are overpowered, but some of them feel like they should be mutually exclusive, since they're just insanely OP when used in combination with one another. You'll see what I mean once I get into the tier list, but first, a brief overview of the insect faction's general attributes and history. Insects were added to the game during the early Carboniferous expansion. The devs bumped up they were so giant too because of the, he's he's getting into it but the oxygen is like literally the reason why like we don't uh have as big animals as we used to and also big insects the atmospheric oxygen level which allowed members of the arthropod faction to adopt larger sizes and more costly abilities and while most of the arthropod player base was trying to dominate the land by leveling up their size a small offshoot of the crustacean player base opted to forego the gigantism trait and instead used this oxygen bonus to unlock an ability never before seen in game flight because these new creatures were the very first to gain the ability to fly the air became entirely their domain for the time being and would remain that way until reptiles unlock the ability several expansions later insects are extremely diverse in their abilities and stat spreads in fact they're so diverse that it's impossible to include them all in a single video I'll be keeping things fairly generalized, but truth be told, many of the groups I'll be discussing today have so many standout members that they could easily be an entire tier list in and of themselves. I was thinking, like, isn't like a dung beetle like one of the best because nobody really is going to fight like over a dung beetle because they're like, you know, they're on dung all the time. So, and also they, uh, you know, they kind of just like stick to themselves mostly um, so, unless they... You know, they both want to have, like, the same pile of dung or something like that. So it's a little tough to pin down their general attributes, but there are a few commonalities. Being members of the Arthropod faction, all insects are granted the exoskeletal armor perk, which greatly raises their AC compared to soft-bodied builds of similar sizes, with the only downside being a massive reduction in those same defensive stats for a short time every time the player levels up. This makes insects quite tanky on average, allowing them to excel in combat. The insect build also has access to the Compound Eyes perk, which grants them vastly improved awareness compared to other arthropods like scorpions and centipedes. With 360 degree vision, their ability to avoid obstacles, dodge attacks, and pursue targets while flying is far superior to most other flyers. This enhanced perception perk is important because insects tend to have naturally high stealth, 
so in order to compete with other insect builds, acute vision is required. We've only just scratched the surface of the insane abilities insects have access to though. For a more in-depth look, let's get into the tier list. At the bottom of the tier list, we have the silverfish. The silver... I used to hate those things, dude. I used to like... So when I would... So when I was like living in Illinois, and especially since we live like in the suburbs, um, you would see like a lot of these, um, especially like downstairs and stuff, because uh, it's like really moist down there when like summertime hits and stuff like that. Because like in the wintertime, you wouldn't really see a lot of them. But like, well, I can't say that. You would see like some of them, but I feel like I see more in the summer than in the winter. So yeah, I, I see these a lot. And also I've seen a lot of gnats, which sucked. Silverfish is the most primitive insect build still in existence. It kind of blurs the line between what is and is not considered an insect, and not in a good way. Unlike other flightless insects, which decided to respec and drop the flight ability in favor of more refined strategies, the silverfish build actually never had access to it in the first place. Aside from having an exoskeleton, they don't really have any of the abilities that make insects powerful. They do not have wings and have essentially no combat abilities. They have fairly low defenses and get bodied left and right by pretty much everything, with their only useful stat being their decently high movement speed. Their special ability allows them to gain XP from eating cellulose and lignin, meaning they can farm XP from wooden structures, which normally don't grant any experience. This ability would be fairly powerful in forest biomes, but because they're such weak combatants, they tend to actually stick to urban areas, feeding on things like paper and cloth in the relative safety of houses, apartments, and office spaces. Even there, they aren't completely safe though. And while no build is ever truly safe in the insect meta, the silverfish is- For real, spiders eat, spiders eat them a lot. Literally whenever I would see like, a spider web, I would usually see like a silverfish on a spider web. They eat them a lot. The lack of useful abilities places it firmly in F tier. That's honestly the only insect build I believe deserves an F tier ranking. Most insects are quite viable, and even the less viable ones tend to have at least a few useful things going for them, even if those things aren't necessarily broken. First in D tier, we have the Phasmid build. The stick bug. I love, I love like stick bugs. They're like little, they're like so weird, but they just like do like cool stuff, like mayhem ritual stuff. They like kind of like swing side to side to like, uh, find a mate or whatever, like to dance, like they basically like, and then like the female goes whoever like dance better. I know I'm explaining it so wrong, but like, I just love it. It's funny. <laughs> Which includes walking sticks and leaf mimics. These builds sport what are unquestionably some of the most impressive camouflage abilities in the entire game, second only to color changing builds like the octopus and chameleon. As impressive as these are though, the question I constantly end up asking is, is this really necessary? Because with the exception of insects which deliberately lower their stealth as part of the aposematic coloration strategy, insects as a whole already have an above average stealth, and are usually able to maintain this while still specking into other equally impressive abilities. Their camouflage can only take them so far. While they're near undetectable while remaining motionless, walking sticks still need to move to find food. And while they do mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this certainly isn't perfect. In fact, if they're ever caught in an environment where camouflage doesn't match as well, hey. well, their instincts to sway and move can actually end up giving their position away even more, rather than aiding in their attempts to hide. Some phasmids do possess chemical defenses, but as we'll see further up the tier list, this attack is quite mild compared to the heat some other insects are packing. Phasmids have a similar game plan to sloths, complete with all the major flaws this strategy is filled with. Although at least phasmids don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. Next in D tier, we have the Lepidopterans, the faction which includes moths, butterflies, and skippers. At first glance, these may seem like absolute bottom tier builds. They're among the most vulnerable builds in the game when it comes to combat with extremely squishy defensive stats and utterly abysmal offensive abilities. Many of the larval forms of these builds are 100% defenseless and have a mobility stat in the single digits, literally the freest kills in the game. However, the Lepid player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. Q 
caterpillars and adult lepids alike can adopt quite convincing disguises, some designed to help them blend in, and some designed to intimidate. Granted, these strategies often don't <clears throat> hold up against high intelligence builds, but it does help. Some caterpillars spec into quite potent defenses, like spines and toxins, which make them simply not worth the potential damage to take on. And credit where credit is due, <laughs> even though they still are fairly defenseless, butterflies and moths do have excellent mobility, and can fly much greater distances than most insect builds. That is true. Isn't the monarch butterfly like the long, like the longest migration uh, in the U.S. or whatever? Or this enables like them to avoid high conflict areas of the map and reach higher quality loot that might be too rare for most players to rely on. Their massive wings, in addition to being highly customizable for a variety of stealth or intimidation purposes, also just make them look much larger than insects of comparable body sizes, which helps dissuade attacks. But ultimately, Lepids still take plenty of L's, and most high-tier insect builds have quite oppressive matchups against them, so they're definitely a below-average faction. That's actually it. I mean, they'll probably spec up in the next patch. For D -tier, and I know it might seem like we're moving up the tier list quickly, but again, insects are a massively successful faction and are going to be concentrated in the higher tiers. At the bottom of C tier, we have the Cockroach. The Cockroach is the ultimate survivor, which opted to spec into mobility, stealth, and a multitude of elements. They're so disgusting, dude. Honestly, so disgusting. I remember when I... Uh... <laughs> see... Seeing like the big ones that they have like in Florida, honestly never again, never again. In lieu of any offensive abilities. While they don't pack much heat, their flat shape allows them to easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely difficult for other players to attack them in. They're rather clumsy flyers, but they do have an above average ground movement speed, enabling them to quickly scurry to cover if they see a predator player approaching. However, when caught out in the open or backed into a corner, they're fairly helpless and easily one of the most vulnerable builds in the entire insect faction. They're also somewhat carried by human mains, making temperate and tundra servers viable for them, because really, as impressive as their toxin and radiation resistance abilities are, they're quite vulnerable to the cold and would still be mostly confined to jungle servers if not for humans unlocking the fire control ability. The biggest variants may be able to tank one or two hits, but even then, with no way to fight back, they're still pretty screwed if they fail to outright escape a fight. Next in C tier, we have the Earwig, a fearsome looking generalist build, which appears to have a giant pair of mandibles on its rear end, called Cersei. As fearsome as these Cersei forceps are, if we actually check the Earwig's base stats, we quickly notice that, just like all of its other stats, its power stat is actually quite mediocre. As menacing as the Cersei are, the actual piercing damage they can deal is fairly minimal and can even be deflected by the most basic of armor. And even against builds without armor, the damage is so low that larger builds still don't really need to be wary of approaching an earwig and can attack without restraint. Still, just because they can doesn't mean they do, as the earwig's intimidation factor alone is oftentimes enough to protect it from conflict. And credit where credit is due, the forceps are actually fairly decent in matchups against soft-bodied insects, and allow the earwig to carry their targets much better than they could with their jaws. And while it may seem silly to have opted for rear-facing weapons instead of the more typical forward-facing ones like mandibles and rostrums, the position does actually serve a purpose, in that it allows earwigs far greater access to burrows and tight spaces, where they can hide out and avoid conflict altogether. Of all of the weapons insects have access to, Cersei might be some of the most unorthodox, which probably contributes to its ability to intimidate other players. However, I think to get out of mid-tier, earwigs need to actually have the ability to back up their threat display. They would do well to spec into some sort of venom. Venom-infused stings are a fairly common attribute for insects, so this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. So, while certainly a viable mid-tier, don't overestimate this build's abilities. At the top of C tier, we've got the Orthopterans, including Grasshoppers, Crickets, and Katydids. These are the first mobility-centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial hind legs rather than their wings. Flight is an excellent defensive ability, as it allows the user to get out of reach of an attack's range. But this utility is lessened if their ability to get airborne has too much startup lag. And so instead of using their wings to get themselves up into the air, 
a powerful jump enables the Arthopteran mains to escape vertically at instant speed. Their excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within striking range without alerting them. And because their jump has such excellent frame data, landing an ambush strike on an Arthopteran can feel near impossible at times. And even if a player does manage to secure a grab, their powerful hind legs can function as quite an effective combo break. The spines on their legs augments the damage their kicks can deal, meaning that if a grasshopper can tank the first few hits of an ambush attack, they may be able to turn the tide of a confrontation and escape after dealing serious damage to the attacker. With that said, I think there are a few flaws in their strategy which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. In a similar manner to the flying fish, using such a drastic escape option can sometimes end up putting you in a worse position than you were before. Especially if your local meta has a lot of spider players, and although they do present a challenge, most predator players aren't disrupted by the grasshopper's kicks, and can either tank the damage outright, or one-hit the grasshopper before it even has a chance to retaliate. <laughs> I like how the pretty man is just like, <laughs> just kept slamming it, like, die, die, die. At the bottom of the tier we have the Hemipterans, a diverse order of insects with a few things in common, including generally having high defense and being somewhat shield-shaped. However, the most notable Oh, so the kiss so the kissing book actually goes into that thing. Okay. Is that rather than slicing or pinching mouth parts, the Hemiptera build opts for a piercing rostrum, perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. For the majority of Hemipteran builds, this allows them to farm XP from sources that are normally hard to access like the energy-dense sap inside trees and stems, or the starch inside of steeds. However, there are some Hemipterans which use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite that is able to pierce through armored targets. Their venom is powerful enough to one-shot just about any other insect, and can even deal severe damage to larger builds. The only major shortcoming here is that these so-called assassin bugs tend to actually have fairly low stealth, opting for the aposomatic intimidation defense I mentioned earlier. And on top of all that, they have fairly low mobility, making actually ambushing another player kind of difficult if they're actually paying enough attention to simply dodge the attacks and flee. Some do break this trend though, and opt for both better camouflage and high aquatic mobility, making them some of the most fearsome aquatic builds in the game. On the herbivore side of that is insane. I've just never seen something that that's insane that was that big. Okay. Hemipterans tend to fare a bit worse. They usually still have fairly low mobility and low stealth, and their defenses may be higher than the average, but are nowhere near as impenetrable as some of the builds higher on this list. They tend to rely on a chemical defense similar to some phasmids, which is where they get the name stink bugs from. However, similar to phasmids, these defenses also tend to be a bit lacking and often fail to deter attackers. So it's certainly a group with some standout members and fine for XP farming, but still nothing too broken. And topping off B tier, we have the Neuroptera, a rather clumsy build with some pretty pathetic looking base stats. Genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. However, looking at the final form of this build paints a highly misleading picture of its capabilities. The larval form, which is the form they spend the vast, vast majority of their time as, is a brutally effective predator build for any player who prefers the camping playstyle. Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their size. Ant lions have a devastating venomous bite, which they use to one-shot unsuspecting players before draining all their life points with their hollow jaws. Because of their ability to construct pitfall traps, their passive stealth rating is extremely high, making their ambush playstyle unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough, once the prey gets caught in their trap, the ant lion even has the ability to launch projectiles to stun its target, making escape a near impossibility. I have an entire video dedicated to the overpowered abilities of Neuroptera and Larvae, but in short, they are what the Earwig pretends to be. If you took the Earwig Circe, put them in front, and made them sharper and gave them deadly venom to boot, you'd have an ant lion. So what? That is insane. I've never even heard of that insect before. Like, I've never heard of an ant lion before, so that's like a weird one I've just never seen or heard of. Adult form. Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time at all as adults. They don't even have the ability to eat in this form, and really only exist to be a vessel that allows players to find each other and complete the mating quest line. Wait, what? They can't... <laughs> they can't even eat? <laughs> See, that's why I say, like, incest kind of got, like, 
the worst, the worst bills possible. Because, like, when they get, like, they only get to be an adult for maybe, like, a week at most. Some for, like, 24 hours. And then, like, you know, everything is, like, in between that. Like, you don't even get to be an adult for, like, years. You only get to be an adult for, like, maybe a week or two. Which, like, to me kind of sucks. Something they lack the ability to do in their much less mobile Marvel form. So, while I do think it'd be more impressive if they didn't take such a massive cut to their power level during their final level up, there's no denying that for the vast majority of their playtime, these builds are an absolute menace to encounter. At the bottom of A tier, we have a personal favorite of mine, Mantis. Mantises have a fairly straightforward playstyle, consisting of slashing and grabbing their targets using powerful spiked raptorial forelimbs. If we take a look at the Mantis' stats, we see that the Mantis has one of the highest base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has a stealth stat, similar to that of a walking stick, which it desperately needs in order to be able to get within striking range of its targets. Its clumsy flight and slow ground movement speed makes chasing prey basically impossible. However, what they lack in movement speed, they easily make up for with strike speed. The Mantis' strike is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered hopelessly evasive. As powerful as these strikes are, one weakness of the strategy is that the grappling attack doesn't immobilize the target, and actually brings them within range of a counterattack. And while the Mantis' large size enables it to tank most counterattacks, attacking a venomous target can end up being a serious blunder for a Mantis player. So, definitely a powerful high tier predator, but not one that's so invincible that Mantis mains can get careless. Next in A tier, we have the flies. This does get a bit confusing due to the amount of other builds that use the word fly in their name. But this group, the true flies, are defined by a very specific feature. True flies only have two wings. This might seem like a major trade-off but while it does leave them more vulnerable to having their flight ability disabled from taking damage, the perk they unlock in return is more than worth the risk. Instead of a second pair of wings, flies swap them out for Haltiers, a sensory structure that grants flies an insanely powerful buff to their aerial maneuverability and their evasion. Their superior aerobatics make them all but impossible to land a hit on midair, and also enables predator fly variants such as the robber fly to launch incredibly precise attacks mid-flight and take down targets that would normally be too powerful to confront head-on, but are unable to effectively counterattack during flight. However, most flies are either scavengers or parasites, using their quick mobility and superior reaction speed to weave past the defenses and avoid the sweeping counterattacks of larger players. While they do have an extremely short lifespan, there's no denying that they make the most of the time they do have, and are one of the most efficient and evasive builds in the entire game. But while flies are excellent aerial combatants, they are no match for the ultimate aerial hunter build. The dragonfly is similar to the crocodile in that it is one of the most well-optimized PvP builds that has ever existed in the game. It's already such an efficient build that- <laughs> Why did he just like knock that one off? What? <laughs> across several balance patches and game expansions, the dragonfly has seen very few changes to its core strategy. They simply aren't necessary, as the Dragonfly is already equipped to deal with just about anything the devs throw at it. So what is it about the Dragonfly that has given it such a competitive edge? Dragonflies have the best aerial maneuverability of any build in the game, and the highest top flight speed of any insect. Unlike most insects, Dragonflies have specced into the ability to move their wings independently of each other, which grants them the ability to move in any direction without needing to turn and face that direction, meaning they can strafe mid-flight and even fly backwards. This ability makes their flight more energetically demanding than it is for other insects. That one just really was playing with fire right there. Just wanted to be dangerous, just to be dangerous, chaotic. So this is a high commitment, high reward playstyle. In order to ensure a proper payoff for their incredible agility, Dragonflies have also specced into what is arguably the best vision of any arthropod. Extremely large, high resolution eyes that take up basically their entire head, granting them full 360 degree vision. This allows them to track all potential targets around them with ease, and allows them to see attacks coming long before they're actually at risk of getting hit. Unlike many of the other builds on this list, which either have a powerful larval form but a weak adult form, or a powerful adult form that can only achieve this after enduring an extremely vulnerable early game, the Dragonfly is a high-tier predator in both forms. 
While everyone knows they dominate the skies when they reach their max level, what you might not know is that as nymphs, dragonflies are one of the most vicious aquatic builds in the game, able to one-shot similarly sized fish and amphibian players. Now, while it was tempting to put dragonflies in S tier, they do have a few shortcomings. While they are generally able to see approaching predators before it's too late, they aren't particularly good at avoiding accidentally flying into dangerous situations. They are easily trapped by spiderwebs and are often snatched out of the air when flying too close to another player. In addition, dragonflies cannot walk, meaning that their energy expensive flight ability is their only option if they need to reposition themselves. Not that devastating of a weakness, but it's enough that this ancient build can't quite break into S tier. First in S tier we have the beetle. I know beetles are gonna have to be S tier. They're like hard they're like literally I would probably say one of the better like one of the better insects, honestly. So they hit I know they have to be S tier. The beetle is the epitome of the insect build. A bunch of extraordinarily powerful abilities that seem like they shouldn't really function properly when used in conjunction with each other, yet somehow actually end up synergizing unbelievably well. Beetles are the premier tanks of the insect faction, with an outer cuticle sturdy enough to deflect just about any attack with ease. It has such a high AC that it can confidently plow through a swarm of aggressive ants without taking any damage, something that even many reptiles and amphibians can't get away with. Now, typically when a build is heavily invested into defenses like this, it has to make a lot of sacrifices in its other stats. This is the opposite of what we see in the beetle build, as in addition to being the most heavily armored insect in the game, it also excels in several other metrics. The most obvious of which is its power stat. Beetles can obliterate their enemies in combat using powerful jaws and explosive chemical weapons. Their ability to bulldoze opponents with their forward-facing weaponry is hard to overstate, but in my opinion, their real damage potential comes from beetles which possess the ability to blast their attackers with a toxic or acidic chemical burst. But that's not where the craziness stops, because although you'd probably expect a high power tank to be a slow lumbering build, beetles also possess the top terrestrial movement speed of any. Bombardier beetles are kind of crazy, like with the light like up the spray or whatever. Insane. Uh, uh, I remember like watching like a coyote, I think it was coyote water. No, it wasn't coyote. It was like uh, another video like about them, and it was like literally insane. Any insect. And if that weren't enough, despite often having heavy horns or giant mandibles, packing a tank full of noxious chemicals, being clad in heavy armor, and strapped with enough muscle to move objects far, far above their weight class, the beetle is still able to fly without much issue. Now, they did sacrifice one of their sets of wings for additional armor, so they can't perform the advanced aerobatics that dragonflies and houseflies can. But the ability to get from point A to point B via flight is still extremely valuable, both for escaping danger and for reaching valuable points of interest. In short, beetles have essentially every ability they could ask for. They are an amalgamation of everything that makes the insect faction so powerful, and so it's no surprise that beetle species comprise a whopping 25% of all species in the game. They're so versatile and adaptable that a beetle player can find a niche in essentially any server. They truly are the ultimate insect and deserve a tier list of their own. As incredible as this combination of powerful abilities is, ultimately the beetle is still lacking the most powerful insect ability of them all, eusociality. Now, I have an entire video dedicated to explaining just how broken this ability is, and there's no question that the insects that incorporate it into their game plan simply dominate all in their path. Now, technically, termites are a variant of the cockroach build, but they have such a unique... I didn't even know that they're a variable, that they're a variant of cockroach build. That's kind of insane that I, I, I did not know that, but I can see it. And powerful playstyle that lumping them in with mid-tier cockroaches seems disingenuous. The termite queen is the longest lived insect in the game, with a lifespan near that of a human or elephant. And it spends these many decades building one of the most powerful armies the game has ever seen. These termite armies are able to construct some of the most well-fortified bases in the game. I remember seeing like videos of the mounds, like that's actually insane. Even beaver dams and human skyscrapers are run for their money. Not only do they build incredible bases, but termites literally transform the map in order to better optimize their colony's ability to gather resources. They will pave paths and build ramps and bridges to important resource deposits. This efficiency allows them to support a huge army and command vast territories. 
Termites, despite being most closely related to cockroaches, have a combat style that is... I feel like ants might actually be up top, though. Like, I do feel like that ants probably will be number one, because if termites are in, in you know, they said, you know, how Tirzu was saying, like, uh, how eurosocial, you know, like, eurosocial animals work better. I'm guessing it would have to be that. It's right. actually most similar to the spitting cobra, which, if you've seen my snake tier list, you'd know is also a top tier build. Termites can accurately fire acid from a needle like horn on their face, dealing heavy damage to anything caught in its blast. Some termites opt for giant slicing jaws instead of acid sprayers on their head, and are crucial for defending their face from an onslaught of invaders. Termites are a somewhat imbalanced build, with crazy powerful forward facing weaponry. But extremely vulnerable optimism. Sorry about that, the camera cut out, but we are back uh, in the insect tier. We are back on insect tier. Let's talk about termites. This means that oftentimes, despite a larger size, they are quickly overwhelmed if they get outnumbered and flanked. I might not hear what he said. Uh, that the back is. Basically, he was saying that the front is like really like tangy, but like the back of them is soft, so that means that they can get killed from the back. That's all that you miss, basically. Not usually an issue, as termites are proficient at defending in a phalanx formation, which covers the weak points of individual members. So certainly not a bad enough weakness to negate the top tier status of eusociality. But this weakness does mean that I gotta give the top spot to the other eusocial insect faction. I already knew it. It was gonna be ants, bees, and wasps. I already knew. Because it's like, you already said that, like, you know, that's how race they're good, but they have that weak spot. I'm like, ants don't really have a weak spot. They're on every server. Like, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> Anoptera is the group of insects that includes ants, bees, and wasps. Unlike termites, these insects are a bit more well-rounded, having decent armor all over, and tend to have both forward and rear-facing weaponry, with most Hymenopterans packing strong jaws and a venomous stinger. The wasps' signature buzz and yellow banding are so infamous that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain advantage on their own intimidation checks. You social Looking kind of sus. Can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. They can launch organized attacks containing thousands of combatants. They can capture prisoners, cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible degree. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Ants in particular are masters of both empire building and military tactics, often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural projects in their own territory. So while beetles may take up a larger percentage of total insect variants, termites and ants both vastly outnumber any other insect build. And while I don't base my tier lists purely off of population, there's no denying that the abundance of these insects is due to their incredibly powerful strategies and their ability to bend their environment to their advantage. In fact, the only genuine threats to you social players tend to be invaders disguising themselves as members of their own colony, but are really there to disrupt, steal, and attack. Many spider, hemiptera, and mantis mains adopt the strategy and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites weave their way into their ranks. Something similar happens when you browse the internet without using NordVPN. Ah, the that was a good sponsor switch. That was a really good sponsor switch. So yeah, that's another video. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Also, uh, subscribe to uh, subscribe to DS3 TV. Want to get 10,000 subscribers? And also. Um, yeah, I'm, good. I'm back, so uh, you can keep requesting, you, you can request uh, videos that you want me to react to in the comment section down below, and I will react to them. So, talk to you guys in the next video, and peace.